Welcome back to the office of the JF-17 founder. Today we will be discussing how to employ anti-ship weapons in the JF-17. And for this uh, exercise I have loaded the C-802 anti-ship missile and the C-701 uh, TV guided missile. These missiles are your primary choice when dealing with ships. And uh, it's going to be... They're fairly easy to use, but they still require some technique. It might also be worth noticing that the uh, C-701, the smaller missile right here that is essentially a Maverick-like TV-guided missile, is not, I repeat, not powerful enough to damage larger ships. Now we have some uh, help in this effort. Coastal batteries have just opened fire with uh, coast um, with heavy missiles against our target. So our job here will be try to coordinate our missile launches with that of the target. Of course, currently we have waypoint one where the enemy is supposed to be but the ground radar is also a really useful tool when it comes to detecting ships uh, especially as ships stand out like a beacon in the desert on the ground radar so essentially all you need to do is look for the green blips and we're already closing fairly fast on it so what we are going to do now is that we are going to switch to our C-802 missiles. We are going to use the direct mode, fuse direct, and power is now on. Um, while it was already on, I decided that it was better to just show the entire procedure. And the missiles are essentially fire and forget. but. When it comes to the missiles, just launch two of them at once. There are seldom any reason for you to just launch one of them. And you can also choose here if you want them to skim high, low, or medium. But low flying missiles are always, and I say always, far easy, uh, far more difficult for the enemy to shoot down. And the drop interval is controlled by the aircraft itself, so we don't have to worry about that. Missiles are away. And while we are waiting for those missiles to uh, get ready, we can switch to our uh, TV guided missiles. And we will use the automatic mode. And we will be launching them in pairs since they are so. Hello. Hello. Since they are not really a powerful weapon. So, when you're also over the ocean, it's also worth noting, noticing that you should either keep the autopilot in or you should keep your airplane trimmed. Now, we are gonna switch to the right hand screen pod TVIR. And we go are going to turn it on. I was going to say we are going to turn it on. But apparently it's still loading. So we can have a look meanwhile and see how it goes for the shipwreck missiles. And our own missiles. Our own missiles are coming in right on the tail of the shipwreck missiles. So everything is fairly good there. Now these, this is now on idle, so we can turn it on. And we can now start looking for a suitable target. And as you can see down in this corner, you can adjust the length of the target you wish to lock on. Everything from 5 meters to 400 meters, for example a train or similar. But we are gonna lock it on for about 45 me meters and we are going to guide it gently gently down the stream onto one of the ships. Tracking. 
if you can't get a lock, like I can't right now, it is most likely that the it is looking for something a bit larger. So, uh, looks like we can see the enemy hunting the first set of missiles here. We have a lock. Missiles are away. And these missiles can be fired at relatively short ranges. And they're almost impossible to intercept. So, two missiles just hit that uh, enemy patrol boat. And it should hopefully provide enough of a distraction for the second wave of uh, missiles to uh, come in and hit the target. I don't really know how our missiles fared, but just firing two missiles is seldom enough. You usually have to fire more than uh, that and use the entire an entire squadron's worth of launches to make it worthwhile. So that has been basic anti-ship operations in the JF-17 Thunder. I hope you have learned something from this and if you want to try it yourself it's fairly easy. Just boot up the mission editor, place down some ships and fire away. As I've stated, the basic C-802 are simply fire and forget, so you can't go wrong. So, now you think to yourself, how can I make this process more difficult? Well, I got you covered. And the tricky way to do this is using route points. And route points has to be programmed before, I say again, before you take off. They can be added in the F10 map. You simply add a notification on the uh, a marker on the F10 map and name it e RP1, RP2, essentially the path you wish the missile to fly. Now I want to stress that the man in the middle missile we are going to use the C802 AKB I think it is. Uh that one is not really designed to engage C targets. You usually just use the anti-ship radar guided version for that. And the reason is that for this m specific missile you need to have a data link pod. And the data link pod takes up a position that you can, that you should really be using for fuel. And the second reason is that you can also use a sensor point of interest to lock the missile and then simply follow the missile's path. But uh, that requires you to fly close and we don't want to do that. So we are switching to the manual mode and FP30, that means the coordinates on row 30 and that is the pre-planned point we want. So we're going to launch both of the missiles at once. They are going to be in pop-up mode and they will cruise low. So missiles are now away. However, for us to keep guiding the missile, we need to stay within the missile envelope. And this is actually a problem because... Um, <laughs> We are flying Warning. fairly quickly right now, so we are going to slow Warning. down and let the missiles overtake us Warning. so that the targeting pod is Warning. getting a decent. Warning. So, then you go to the pod, Warning. mill, and then you select the Warning. missile you wish to use. So we're Warning. going to kill the master warning as well. So we're going to go back to the pod and we don't actually have a video signal yet, but we do have a video signal right now. So uh, we can start, we can make... Oh, we need to try and save that missile from its imminent destruction. So we are currently cruising over the water with our pet missile right now. And are guiding it towards the target. 
Now, as I've stated, this is not the efficient way to do things by any stretch of the imagination. It is simple to do, but it is very inefficient. So we are going to make sure that our autopilot is still in. And we are going to guide the missile towards one of the center ships there. We have complete manual control over the missile now. I don't know if it's going to do a terminal pop-up or if it's going to hit. That is most likely a hit. So, I do not know where the second missile... The second missile has actually flown right past the entire thing. So, we'll have to take manual control. Assuming direct control. And uh, we are going to try and get that missile towards back towards the convoy. Now this is easier said than done. We just lost the link signal to the missile since it flew out of the envelope range of the data link pod. So. As you can see, this is the inefficient way of doing things, but I wanted to show you because it can be fun at times to do it in that way. However, I do not recommend it. Uh, just load the radar guided version instead, you'll have a lot more fun with it. I hope this has been of help to you, and if you have any doubts, just remember, the radar guided version is the way to go.